Okay, hey everybody, it's Jerry from Bullshit Corner. Welcome to today's video. Today's video in the LS Swap Project. We're going to take the wiring harness off the engine now. I'm going to label it first, and then we're going to start modifying it for a standalone wiring harness that we'll have to integrate into the Jeep like I've been talking about. If you want to see the step-by-step, -step, I'm going to have that video on my other channel sometime. Probably not when this video appears, but... When it does, it feels weird to be back in the garage though. I have been off for a little while. I flew out to Ontario um, to visit my brother and his wife. And uh, man, there's a lot of shit that went down before I left. So a couple days before I was supposed to leave, I was getting ready, I was packing, and I had to get some things from underneath the bathroom sink. And I opened up the door, the whole bottom of the cupboard was covered in the water and this black sludge. And I don't know how long it was leaking for. But the drain pipe between the P-trap and the sink where the lever was for the drain to close it and open it. Well, over time from opening and closing it, it wore a hole through. And I don't know how long it was leaking for. It was quite the mess. And I had to run down to Home Depot and I got that fixed. And then Tomcat was acting funny because he knew I was leaving and Trevor my friend Trevor came over he took care of Tomcat when I was gone checking on him every day and I guess Tomcat was being kind of a brat and then when I got home he just jumped in my suitcase and he didn't want he didn't want to leave because probably afraid I was gonna leave him again Tomcat I was only on vacation for a few days I'm not going nowhere now. Can I unpack all my stuff from my suitcase? Can I? And are you gonna let me? It's best to know what your wires are before you start splicing in the harness. Because if you don't, could start gutting out some stuff that's valuable. Like this stuff, most of the stuff on this engine you all need. Like this is the idle air control. Kind of need that. Label it all. Label it all. Because otherwise, you're going to get too happy with the snips. And things are going to go south. Like this EVAP. Well, I know the EVAP's going to go. But I'm marking it. This is gonna be gutted from the harness. I already ordered a bunch of stuff from Novak Conversions, or Novak, and uh, some things to get me started. So everything is all labeled now. So we can take the harness off, bring it inside, start chopping it up. These three plugs I'm gonna get cut off I believe all the wires except for the pink ones get cut off and you trace them back and some of the wires you're going to use some of them you're not pull some pins out of the computer need to get a meter like I said we talked about this before I think these are the O2 sensor wires we're gonna find that out shortly all right now the fun stuff begins inside the house it'll be cheaper to Build a wiring harness instead of heating up the garage. And plus, since it's taking up the table, it'll give me more of an incentive to get it done. Got the GoPro session set up to help film. Some tools I'm gonna need. Of course, the meter and this I actually picked up not that long ago off Amazon, little tool. And this was printed off of lt1swap.com. Right there, that website is a huge wealth of knowledge. And of course, I've got a package here. So let's see what the hell I got from my buddy, Joko Jinder.
Look at that, a Unimog sign. That's pretty sweet. And a sticker, yeah. Gonna have to find a spot in the garage for that to hang it up. I want to thank you, Joko, for sending me stuff. You sent me the most out of anybody that watches my channel. There's no going back now. That one's cut off. That one's cut off. That one's cut off. All right. Every wire that's not pink has got to come off. You know, after electrical tape is wonderful stuff, after a few years, trying to peel this crap off, you know, and the way people put it on too, like, like who does that? Like start at one part and then wrap it around. Like people are just trying too hard to make a freaking puzzle. Oh, that wire just looped and just came right out. So now for that one. This is where the fun begins. Is your head starting to hurt yet? And then 17, also need to remove 19, 54 purple wire, pull it out, looks like I forgot one, 45. Ah, I just finished the red, gonna start on the blue, you just gotta take your time. Don't let all these wires get inside your head because they're all color coded. So whatever color it is, it means something. Don't stress it out. It's not as bad as it looks. It just looks intimidating. But once you start ripping it apart, you'll understand it a whole lot better. How many people with OCD are triggered right now? Now we're going to continue removing wires. The first one we need to remove is number 13. 13 does not have a home. Next one is 23. 23 is sensor ground EGR. This is the kind of fun you're going to have doing the wiring. The harness is so full of frickin' dirt. Probably grow some pot out of all that. So this is where it starts getting messy. Got a bunch of old tape down there. This is your crank position sensor. And then over here, these wires and plugs. I'm just slowly removing the tape, unraveling it, and then running all those circuits to where they meet up to the main harness. We're gonna pull the wires out. I still got this EVAP one right here. It's got a pink wire. So one of those pink wires is gonna to run to that fuse block over there that we're gonna to have to cut off and pull out. Oh, my head is starting to ache from all this rework. Got the O2 sensors figured out. I need these wires right here. These two, there's a ground. And then R80, R80 doesn't work off the uh, pinout I got. That's for like a six liter. And these wires right here, the tan wires, all the tan wires are connected. So it must be like a PCM ground. Pink is your power. Uh, purple is your signal. And then the green is your heater isolated ground O2 sensor. So. I think at this stage, I'm gonna start taping up the harness before it becomes too much of a mess. Somebody's just passed out on the couch on all the hoodies, Tom Cats. You know, you sleeping away? Sleepy Ed, you're awake. 
You slept all afternoon. Do you feel guilty? Do you feel guilty? Hmm? I know. Ear scratches. What are you going to do tonight? Are you just going to go back to bed? Are you? Well, today's the win-win situation. Going to continue putting this harness back together. And I went to go get some labels for my label machine here. And this one was on sale for 25 bucks, so I just bought a new one because this one here, the LCD screen's all starting to fade out and it's missing some. You can't really read what you're printing. And for 25 bucks, man, they sure dropped in price. I remember a long time ago when I bought that one, it was over $100. Yeah. All right, let's start labeling. All right, there you go, everybody. It's almost time for motherfucking beer time. Here's the harness completely reworked. This is very time consuming. Now, if I was married, there'd be no way I'd be able to do this on the kitchen table. But if you're definitely going to be doing a harness job, probably have a sheet of plywood on some saw horses and stretch it out. It would be the easiest way to do it. Follow the pinout guides. All the information you need is from the book. Uh, that I bought on LS Swaps and LT1Guide.com, I believe it is. My bad, let me correct myself. LT1Swap.com has all the information that you're going to need to go through all this wiring harness, which the information is what I really need it and use to do this to make it easier. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching, but first, let's have a motherfucking beer time. All right, motherfucking beer time. It's like the live show edition right now. That was a big job, not gonna lie. Cheers, everybody. Oh, fuck, it's foaming over. Fuck, I made a mess. Made a mess. Good thing I got this dirty old rag fucking hanging off the top there. I'm not gonna lie. Doing the wiring harness was a very time consuming it's easy it's easy the hardest part about doing it all is actually just removing the old wire loom and taking the tape off of the wires because after you know over a decade that tape ain't coming off it ain't your friend and the worst thing about it you're trying to peel the tape off you're peeling it away you're peeling it away and all of a sudden you're it gives and the wire loom kind of spreads like that, and big puff of dirt goes right in your fucking face. That's not fun. That is not fun at all. And that happened on more than one occasion. And there's a lot of times I'm gutting stuff out of the harness, pulling out the wires, and all of a sudden I get to a plug I know I didn't need, but the other wire is still attached to the computer. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I have to go back, look at the pinout, look at my sheets, I'm like, how did I forget to pull that one out? How did I forget? If I just, you just get so involved that, you know, sometimes along the way, you just forget a step. But everything is as it should be. And I think if you're gonna do an engine swap, a person should rework their own harness. It gives you an idea on how everything is chained together like in the wiring, all the grounds are all attached and they're all bundled up and they get split off. So I'm actually going to make probably an extra two or three extra grounds to make sure I don't have a grounding issue. Uh, the tan wires, for example, in the hardest, which I think is a PCM ground, those are all bundled up and attached together as well. You're going to see them as some of the sensors, the O2 sensors. Um, and that's where we're going to sit. Now, once we get the engine installed, of course, we're going to start working on the wiring harness. And I talked about this many times before. We're going to try to integrate as much of the wiring into the factory fuse box. Because once we got out the old wiring, we're going to have some open options there. So the fuel pump relay, I'm going to be able to use for sure. Um, the O2 fuse. And uh, I'm going to have to track down some other fuses too and see what they're connected with and see if I can hook up some other things. But that being said, 
I'm going to get going. This is probably an already a long video that jumped quite a bit, but there's going to be a more detailed video on my other channel. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Motherfucking beer time. Pills in their beard to match the pills in their hat. So if you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Ah.